folks, let's talk about five interesting and probably a bit harder data cleaning problems that cannot be solved using the user interface of Power Query. And I've discussed these cases in somewhat or the other format in the YouTube channel. In case you wanna take a look, I'll leave links. But more importantly, I'd like to talk about why what Power Query's user interface is not enough to solve these problems and what you should learn instead. All right, let's go. All right, fellas, the first up is the double headers problem. Very, very common in a lot of data sets that you come across, and you might have come across this in the past as well. Take a look. We have merged headers, the main header on the top, and then underneath that, we have the subheaders. So product is uh, the main header, and underneath we have code, class, and the MRP of that product. We have customer, name, tax, rate, order, sales date, and order due date. Now, in case you would like to work with this data, obviously we cannot really have two headers in the data set. We need to kind of merge the headers, the both the rows of the data, into the single header. Well, here is what I'm expecting the solution to look like. So if you take a look at the solution, we have product code, the merged product uh, column up on the top has been merged with the code, the class and the MRP. So we have product code, product class and product MRP, customer name, tax rate, order sales state and order due date. Now I'm not suggesting that these problems are only solvable through the M language in Power Query. You can also use the user interface of Power Query to solve such problems, but in case your data volumes are higher and you're trying to transpose the data, it is going to get ridiculously slow to solve these kind of problems with the user interface of Power Query. Plus the other bigger benefit of solving this problem using the M language of Power Query is that you can also scale it up. Meaning what you can do is you can decide that how many number of uh, subheaders do I have up on the top. So at the moment we have two headers, one is the main header, then we have the subheader in case in some data set, you have three rows of headers that you'd like to merge. You can create a custom function to be able to solve such problems. I've done a video on that in the past. You should take a look at that. But all I'm saying is that if you have such kind of problems in Power Query, I would prefer to solve them using the M language for the flexibility and the scalability that I get using the M rather than solving it using the user interface of Power Query. All right, take a look at example number two. I've got some data here and that data is pivoted. How do I find that out? If you take a look at any particular number, let's say 11, in order for me to make sense of what 11 means, I'll have to look up on the header, maybe double headers up on the top, and then look on the left. Whenever you're taking a look at the data in the cross tabulation fashion, up on the columns and on the left in the rows, in that scenario, that data is pivoted or cross tabulated. In order for you to kind of work with the data, you would need to unpivot the data so that the entire data can be understood in the row itself. Well, at the moment, if you take a look at this data, which is the number 11, 11 belongs to segment number two for business number one for the month of February, but there is a fourth dimension to the data as well, which is nothing but the name of the sheet, which is nothing but 2016 data. And we have similar data for 2017, 2018, and 2019. Now this kind of problems is relatively hard to solve using the user interface of Power Query. Well, I'm not saying that you cannot solve it. You can obviously solve it. But if you try to solve this using the M language of Power Query, that is going to make it absolutely scalable to take the work that you have done and multiply it with the number of sheets that you have or multiple Excel files that you have and your work becomes a lot more scalable rather than just purely using the user interface to solve this problem. I have a video on this as well. In case you want to take a look at this, please head over to the video and also take a look at the solution to this problem. All right, problem number three. This is perhaps one of my favorite problems uh, that I have spoken about in the past, but please take a look. So we have two Excel files that we are working with, which has uh, year 2005 data and year 2006 data. If you take a look at the headers of both the files, they are similar, but not really the same headers. So we have a date, which is also called a date. We have a rep, which however is called a sales rep in the next file. Customer is called client. Amount is called sales amount right here and then amount right here, so on and so forth. And we also have one extra column right here, which is profit percentage that is missing from this Excel file. How would you combine the data from both the Excel files in such a way that similar columns get appended one below the other? But the problem while appending data sets from these two Excel files is such that you don't really know what kind of columns would you get in the next Excel file and how would you like to rename the column? So using the M language, what you can build is like a custom user controlled naming approach where the user decides what columns of those multiple Excel files do they want and how should they be renamed and then combine the data one below the other. It's a very interesting case study, uses quite a bit of M and I have talked about this case study in the past on the channel. 
if you have a problem like this, you should definitely take a look at that. All right, quick interruption in the video. This interruption is going to be absolutely worth its while. We have launched the M course on Power Query. People have been asking me that when are you launching the M course? And I have been dodging those questions for a very, very long time. But finally, we have an M course that is gonna teach you M right from scratch and take you up to a level where you start to solve very sophisticated problems on your own. The course has got three parts. We first talk about concepts. Those are the building blocks through which you understand how the M language works. We talk about structures, we talk about primitive values, structured values, list, yeah. records, tables, and many other concepts like that. How does looping work? How do you write a complex if statement? What is the meaning of each and underscore? So several such concepts form the first part of the course, which is nothing but understanding the concepts. Then we talk about several case studies, simple to very, very complicated. And how do you kind of think about uh, a structure to solve problems so that you can even apply those patterns and recipes into your own data sets? And finally, we have a short library on talking about the most important functions of the M language. How does a particular function work? And uh, what key things you have to keep in mind? What are the parameters? What are the hidden parameters of that function? All of that makes an incredibly powerful course that is open for enrollment for you guys. I cannot be more thrilled to make this announcement and make this course live for you guys. There are a few last date considerations and stuff like that. You might wanna take a look at the description of the video, but hey, the course is live and you should definitely enroll into it. Case number four, which is also something about combining data from multiple Excel files, but way too tricky than your conventional combining data from multiple files. Now, this is where you would find that the M language really shines. Take a look at the two files that I'm working with. I have multiple PNLs that I want to combine into a single profit and loss statement by adding a few columns. So take a look, we have the first Excel file called Bobby Shop and the second Excel file called ABC Stores. You're going to find that in the first Excel file, there are no junk headers up on the top or junk rows up on the top. But here in this Excel file, we have a few junk rows up on the top that I'd obviously like to remove and then combine the data. The second problem is that the names of the columns is just not the same. So you have a different set of columns here and you have a different set of columns here. There can be, however, similar columns. I just want to pick up the similar columns where the names are different, combine the data and then make one single Excel file out of that. Now, there are many, many variations to combining Excel files into a single Excel file. This is one of them, which is where you definitely have to use the M language to scale this problem up and combine data from multiple Excel files, where you have to deal with anomalies of junk rows, inconsistent headers, and whatnot. I have done a very extensive video on this case study. I suggest that you should take a look at that as well. And finally, we are on case number five, which I would probably call it as a custom delimiter problem that we have it right here. So take a look at the data that I'm working with. We have the transaction number right here and some payment details that you have received. Now we would like to transform this particular data in something like this. So if you take a look, transaction number one has got three rows of data. So total becomes one header, past due becomes another header, discount becomes another header, AC becomes another header, so on and so forth. And that is the output that I'd like to have uh, displayed right here on the right hand side. Now at the moment, uh, if you believe that the delimiter is consistent, which is the dashes that you see right here, that is not going to be true. So sometimes you'll have three or four dashes. Sometimes you'll have many, many dashes. Sometimes you're also going to have, let's say, maybe random you know, equals to sign or something or the other, which is not really consistent with those dashes. Now, this is a relatively sophisticated problem. We don't really have a delimiter position. So we have to write quite a bit of M code to actually get to the solution that we would want and then come up with an output like this. I have done another very exhaustive video on this. I suggest that you take a look at that. But more importantly, if you wanna learn to build solutions like these with your own data sets that you're trying to struggle with, because if you have to build any kind of model in Power BI, the very first step is to clean your data. And if your data is a piece of garbage and you can't really get enough of work done using the user interface of Power Query, 
then you should definitely take a look at my M language course. It's going to be super helpful to take your level from a beginner level of user interface user to a more advanced, sophisticated M user and you are going to be able to solve a lot of nifty problems. The link of the course is in the description. I suggest that you take a look at that. Should you have any questions about the course or anything in general, please post those questions down in the comments. I will be glad to reply. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one of course. Bye now.